Welcome to Lesson 10.5. In this video, we'll be exploring p-series and harmonic series. A p-series is a specific type of infinite series. It's an infinite series in the format series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of p, where p is a positive number. Recall from Lesson 6.13 on improper integrals that an integral in the format integral from 1 over infinity of 1 over x to the p dx will converge if p is greater than 1 and will diverge if p is less than or equal to 1. Now, if you want to see the proof of this statement worked out through improper integration, that's over in Lesson 6.13. Now, because of the integral test, which we covered in the last lesson, this means that the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of p will converge if p is greater than 1 and diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. Now, essentially what this is saying is that the series and the integral are going to do the same thing which makes sense because that's what the integral test told us, where p is a positive number. Let's take a look at some examples. Determine the convergence or divergence of each series. In this first one, we're looking at the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 5. I can clearly see here that this is a p-series and p is 5, which is greater than 1. Therefore, this series converges because p is greater than 1. Taking a look at the next one, we have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 0 0.2. In this example, p is equal to 0 0.2. Since 0 0.2 is less than or equal to 1, this means that our series diverges. In our next example, we have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the cube root of n. I'm just going to rewrite this one slightly. We'll keep it as the series from n equals 1 to infinity, but then instead of having the cube root of n, we'll have n to the power of 1 third. Now we can clearly see that p is equal to 1 third. Since 1 third is less than or equal to 1, this series will diverge because p is less than or equal to 1. In this next one, this is another one that we're going to have to do a rewrite for. We still have the series from n equals 1 to infinity, but n times the square root of n, well, that's really n to the power of 1 times n to the power of 1 half, or n to the power of 3 halves, and that's all over n to the power of 2. Now we can rewrite this one more time and get all of our n's in the denominator. We have series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over, and then if we take 2 minus 3 halves, that's just 1 half. So we have 1 over n to the power of 1 half. Now we can see that p is equal to 1 half. So since 1 half is less than or equal to 1, this series diverges. Now we're looking at the series from n equals 1 to infinity of n to the power of negative e. This is the same thing as the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of e. Now, what is e? Because we can see that p is equal to e, but is that less than or greater than 1? We know that e is about 2.7, so it's going to be greater than 1. Therefore, the series converges because p is greater than 1. In our last one on this page, we have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. What's p in this case? Well, this is really n to the power of 1, so p is equal to 1. Therefore, this series diverges, because if p is less than or equal to 1, the series is going to diverge. In this case, it's actually equal to 1. This is a specific type of p-series called a harmonic series, and we'll be working with harmonic series more in just a moment. The series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n is a special type of p-series called the harmonic series. p is equal to 1 in a harmonic series. And this series diverges, because we know that if p is less than or equal to 1 in a p-series, then our series is going to diverge, and in this case it's equal to 1. Let's take a look at another example. Which of the following infinite series diverge? So in this case, we have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. We see that p is equal to 3, and we know that when p is greater than 1, the series will converge. How about this one? We have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Well, that's the harmonic series, and we know that the harmonic series diverges because p is equal to 1. How about this one? Series from n equals 1 to infinity of n to the power of negative pi. That's the same thing as series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of pi. So we can see that p is equal to pi in this case. Since pi is definitely greater than 1, we know that the series is going to converge. So choice 2 is our correct answer. Only number 2 diverges. Which statement accurately describes the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 3 to the power of n? They're talking about whether it's divergent or convergent and whether it's a p-series, a harmonic series, or a geometric series. I know that for p-series, a, a sub n is going to be equal to 1 over n to the power of p, not p to the power of n. So this one is not a p-series. 
I also know that this is not a harmonic series because harmonic series, the only way that we can have a harmonic series is if we have the series from n equals one to infinity of one over n. That's a harmonic series. So choice A is not correct. So now we just need to determine whether this is a convergent or divergent geometric series. So we know that it's geometric because we can rewrite this series as sum from n equals one to infinity of one third to the power of n. Now, since the absolute value of r, and r is one third, since the absolute value of one third is less than one, this series is going to converge. So it's a convergent geometric series. Now, if you were confused about the nth term test phrase over here, if you tried the nth term test, if you said limit as n approaches infinity of one over three to the power of n, and you tried that, then you would get limit as n approaches infinity, plug in the infinity, that would be a really big number down here, so one over big number equals zero. When the nth term test produces a zero, that means that it is inconclusive. We would not say that it diverges by the nth term test unless the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n was not equal to zero. Therefore, choice B is correct. Which of the following infinite series converge? First, we have the series from n equals one to infinity of one over n plus two squared. Maybe we could use the nth term test for this one. To do the nth term test, we'd take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which in this case is one over n plus two squared. If we plug in an infinity here, we have one over a huge number, which is getting us closer and closer to zero. Now remember, the nth term test does not allow us to determine that a series converges. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to zero, that simply means that the nth term test is inconclusive and we need to use another test. And we can't use p-series or geometric, so maybe we can use the integral test. To use the integral test, we have to verify that our function or the series is going to be positive, continuous, and decreasing for x being greater than or equal to one. We know it's gonna be positive when x is greater than or equal to one or when n is greater than or equal to one because if we plug in a positive number here, plus two and square it, positive over a positive is gonna be positive. And it's also continuous for x being greater than or equal to one because we are only infinite discontinuity would be at x equals negative two. And then to determine whether this function is decreasing, well, if we have the function f of x is equal to one over x plus two squared, that's the same thing as x plus two to the power of negative two, which is gonna enable me to take my derivative more easily. f prime of x is equal to negative two, x plus two to the power of negative three, or negative two over x plus two cubed. Now, if we are only plugging in values of x that are greater than or equal to one, this f prime of x is always going to be negative because we have a negative number over what's gonna wind up to be a positive, which is a negative ultimately. So f prime of x will always be negative when x is greater than or equal to one. This means that f of x is also decreasing for x being greater than or equal to one. Therefore, we can apply the integral test. Let's set up our integral from one to infinity of one over x plus two squared dx. We'll have to use improper integration here, which I do have a separate video on if you are not familiar with that. Then we'll need to find the antiderivative of one over x plus two squared. We can use u substitution for that one. I'm gonna come off to the side and do an indefinite integral, one over x plus two squared dx. We'll say let u equal x plus two, so du would be equal to dx. This means that this is really integral of u to the power of negative two du which is u to the power of negative one over negative one or negative one over u, which in this case is really negative one over x plus two. So that's our antiderivative. Still keeping the limit notation on the front, limit as t approaches infinity of negative one over x plus two, evaluated at one and t. Then I will plug in t and subtract plugging in a one. If we plug in an infinity right here, we'll have negative one over a huge number, which is gonna get closer and closer to zero, and plus one third, so this equals one third. Therefore, since our integral converges, that means that the series is also going to converge here. So number one does converge. Let's try number two. This looks like one that we could use for geometric series. I can rewrite this as the series from n equals one to infinity of e to the power of n times e to the fourth, over two to the power of n. Then I would have series from n equals one to infinity of, and then I'm gonna bring the e to the fourth off as my coefficient, e to the fourth, and then I would have the e to the n over two to the n, or e over two to the power of n. Now this looks like a geometric series with r being equal to e over two. 
since the absolute value of e over 2, which is equal to the absolute value of r, is going to be greater than or equal to 1, that means that this geometric series diverges. So number 2 does not converge. Number 3, we have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over the fourth root of n. For number three, I'm going to rewrite this one as the series from n equals one to infinity of one over n to the power of one fourth. And this is a p series now. So since p is equal to one fourth and p is less than or equal to one, this series is going to diverge. So it does not converge. The only series here that converges is number one. Therefore, b is the correct answer. What are all values of p for which the series from n equals 1 to infinity of p to the power of n over 4 to the power of n plus 1 and the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 2p both converge? So we're looking at two different series here. We have what can be rewritten as a geometric series here and we have a p series here. Let's address the p series first. So in order to make a p series converge, the exponent, which is the 2p in this case, needs to be greater than 1. When we divide both sides by 2, we get that p needs to be greater than 1 half. So that's one of our constraints that we'll be dealing with. Now let's see if we can find values that will make this series converge. I'm going to rewrite this series as the series from n equals 1 to infinity of p to the power of n over 4 to the power of n times 4 to the power of 1. Then I will pull the 1 fourth out to the front as a coefficient. Series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 fourth times, and then p to the n over 4 to the n is the same thing as p over 4 to the power of n. When I'm looking at the convergence or divergence of a geometric series, I'm looking at my r term, which in this case is p over 4. Now, I need the absolute value of r, or the absolute value of p over 4 in this case, to be less than 1 in order to make the series converge. If the absolute value of p over 4 needs to be less than 1, that means that p over 4 needs to be between positive 1 and negative 1. Now, if we multiply everything in this inequality by a 4, we get that p needs to be between negative 4 and positive 4. So another one of our conditions is that p needs to be less than 4, and then over here we have that p needs to be greater than negative 4. However, if p needs to be greater than 1 half, then it's automatically going to be greater than negative 4, so I'm going to kind of disregard that. So choice A is correct because we see that P needs to be between 1 half and positive 4. P needs to be greater than 1 half but less than 4, which matches answer choice A.